All right, so for our least cost path analysis, we need a couple things to get started. Remember from um, Canvas that least cost path is helping you to determine the most cost effective route between a source and a destination. Um, the path I'm creating is one cell wide um, and it moves across the grid cells either horizontally, vertically, or diagonally. The first thing you have to do is to create your cost surface. Like it mentions in Canvas, the cost surface is a lot like your um, site suitability analysis. That's why we do this um, towards the end, because we've already done site suitability, we've already done flow direction, we're repeating a lot of things. So for my example, my question that I'm asking is I want to find, I want to hike across San Diego County from east, from the east over here to the west. How can I go about doing that? What is the best way to do that? Um, so I started coming up with some criteria. First, um, slope. I want to avoid um, some of the really steep areas. I'm not a mountain climber. I just want to cross the county. Obviously, I'm going to have to deal with some hills through here, but I'd like to avoid them as much as possible. I also want to be on maintained trails if possible. So this is the Department of Parks and Rec trails. Not a ton, but if there are some, especially maybe crossing over the, the steeper areas, if there's a trail that I could use, that would be great. Um, and last up, I am looking at the land cover. So this is from the National Land Cover data set um, from 2016. And we can see all the different classes of land cover in San Diego. So a lot of shrub, herbaceous, some greens or forested areas, and a lot of um, developed areas as well. Um, so I can rank those as places I wanna avoid and places that I don't mind walking through. So maybe staying away from croplands, I don't wanna walk through water, so definitely open water ranking that really lowly, but thinking about things like these wetlands, how, could, how should I appropriately rank those in terms of uh, getting from place to place. So when I'm thinking about my um, weights, which we'll get to in a second, but I'm thinking about what is my most important cost and looking at my weights, looking at these, the criteria that I've developed, my most important costs are probably energy and risk. I don't wanna climb a mountain, for safety and also because it just seems really hard. All right, so let's take a look at our analysis. I do recommend that you always use a model with your um, least cost path because it makes it easier to go back and change things. Um, I was recording this video and realized I had some of my reclassification screwed up. So I was able to go back and fix it easily instead of having to start from scratch. So we can see I have my three criteria here. Um, least cost or um, land cover, Land classification is already in a raster format, so I just have to reclassify it and reclassify, reclassify it um, based on the class. And just again, those places that I wanna walk through versus areas I don't wanna walk through. So higher numbers are areas I'd like to avoid. So things like um, wetlands, don't really wanna stomp, stomp through there. Um, Croplands wanna avoid that because it's probably private property. And then for open water, I don't even want to have the option to go through it. So if there's something you do not want your person or animal or vehicle to pass through, have it, the new value be no data. So if it's open water, I don't want to go anywhere near it. Um, so we can hit OK. Um, and we can see same thing for um, trails. I had to turn them into rasters and then reclassify as trail or not trail. So it's pretty straightforward here. It's either a trail, which one is good, or not a trail, which I didn't want to put as 10 as completely avoid because that'd be pretty impossible. So just ranked it as less favorable. Um, and slope, same thing. I created slope, I should say, from my elevation, created slope, um, and then uh, just use the 10 classes and the steepest slopes being the ones to avoid. So I have to run a couple of these tools because I changed some of the settings. So you can tell I've rerun this part of my model because now I have drop shadows. The other thing I'd recommend with least cost path is always save your model and then save your um, MXD file because I tend to, this tends to crash my computer a lot. So I imagine you may see that as well. Okay. So let's see, our outputs, the reclassified slope, we can see um, one through 10, not great representation, um, but one being the most favorable because it says more those flatter areas. Um, 
you can see the reclassed, um, what are these things? Uh, <laughs> trails. So if it is a trail, um, you can see it ranked as 10. Well, everywhere else is ranked as um, a five. Last up, we have reclassified land cover. So again, just one through 10 up to 21. I'm not sure what that 21 is. That's concerning. I'm gonna probably go back and fix that. Okay, so you can see that I fixed these values. It turned out I somehow deleted developed open space from my values. And so I never changed its um, value or never reclassed its value. So anyway, I've reclassed its value. Um, so that has been fixed. Anyway, so we can see our reclassed uh, land cover. So we can see places I'd rather walk through and then the places I like to avoid are this pink and the blues. Um, so again, they don't make a lot of sense, but we can see that the open water has been classed as don't even go there. That's no data, don't go there. Um, all right, so now that we have, where are we? We have created our, let's open up our model. We have created our, um, we reclassified all of our criteria. We now have to create our cost surface or that raster calculator. So we can rerun this tool. Oh, well, I'll explain that in a second. And this raster calculator, when we're creating the surface, this is where we're weighting it. So you can see my weights in here. Um, weighting land cover as the most important after slope, or then slope at 40% and 10% just to those uh, trails because I don't think, because there weren't that many. So land cover, uh, I wanted to really avoid highly urbanized areas um, and slope. I didn't want to work too hard. Um, so you can see where I'm putting most of my weights. Um, so we can look at that output. I'm going to turn this off real quick and we're going to remove this and then re-add it. So we've got our new one. Okay. So that's just our raster, just focus on this part. It's so our three inputs, they've all been weighted. I can open this up so you can see the weights and that formula. Um, and then we can go ahead and look and start to see that places we want to avoid versus um, places that would rank uh, well in terms of having a lower cost. So with the darker areas, lower cost, lighter areas, so some of these really urbanized areas um, would have um, higher costs. So less interested in walking through those areas. Um, we've created our raster surface, um, our cost surface. So this is our first input to our actual cost surface, or at least cost path. Um, model. So here we have our raster calculator output um, put into our cost distance tool, which we can see we are creating a distance raster and we're creating that backlink raster, our distance and direction. I'm going to go ahead and rerun that because we've changed our tool a little bit. Help if I save it first. Let's save everything and then hit run. There we go. So our outputs here are going to our distance, our, um, our cost distance and our cost direction or our backlink raster. So our cost distance is showing, going to show us that areas closer to our starting point will have lower costs. And as we get further away to our destination, they'll have higher costs because it's just more effort. Um, and then the backlink is showing us the direction toward the cell um, with the least uh, cumulative cost. So a lot like our uh, flow direction, looking for that steepest downward descent and flow direction. Here we're looking for that um, value. Uh, so in terms of energy expended, if you think about it that way, it's like if the one value is a three and you have an option um, of a nine or a seven, 
the least amount of energy that I'm going to have to do is going from the cell with a three to the cell with a seven versus the cell with a three, with the cost of three to the cell with the cost of seven. So same principles behind that. Let's go ahead and pause. And when I say save frequently, my computer or the program just crashed while I was running the cost distance. So anyway, my cost distance uh, tool has run. So I have a new distance and new direction outputs. So I'm going to save and save and get rid of the old distance and direction. Add in our new distance. New direction. There we go. So we are seeing our distance and direction um, outputs. So again, reminder, distance. Uh, let's put that distance on. Is our lower things closer to our source, where our starting point are going to be lower cost. So distance is further away, getting all the way across the county is going to be a lot of effort or risk um, things uh, than things that are closer to our start. Here uh, we are looking at our cost or our distance, I'm sorry, our direction or our backlink raster. This is showing us the direction toward the cell with the least cumulative cost. So like I said before, like our flow direction, it's telling us which way uh, to go from each cell will have uh, the least resistance, least amount of cost, whether that's energy, risk, actual cost, time, um, and it's showing you which way to go. So from here, we'd go to our, uh, our flow into our lower right, cell has the least cost, and, and going from there, you can see it, whole diagonal of lower right um, options there. Let's pull back to the county and pull back our model. So always remember, save everything a million times while you're doing this. Our last step, now that we have our new distance and direction, is to run our cost path tool. Pretty straightforward. We have our input distance, our input direction, our backlink raster, um, and we're just creating that new output. Go ahead and run this tool. And our new cost path. Let's close all that. I'm going to remove this and add a new one. So you can see the values. You can start to see the values, those three values of the best route through the county. Um, you could, if you wanted to make it more visible, go through here and change the color to a brighter color um, so you could see it. Looks like I'm walking in a lot of riverbeds and through a valley. Um, so you could see it better. I also have built into the model um, to change that raster to the polyline. Uh, meaning I'm turning this raster, one cell wide raster of the best route of our cost path into a line oops, feature. So then I can adjust symbology even further. Um, I don't know, this may be the old one. Nope, looks about right. So we can go in here and change the width if we wanted to to make it more prominent um, whatever you needed to do you can see if there's any difference between these two it doesn't look like it okay and our final result would be our least cost path that you're seeing here um, so it's showing us the path of the lowest risk for myself arguably more interesting landscape um, and the 
dealing with slope the least. We can see I'm gonna have to cross some hills, but not going straight over the top. Let's see what lines up with any of the trails. It doesn't look, maybe through here, get on some trails. It's interesting, it's avoiding the trails here. I guess it's shorter. But otherwise avoiding a lot. So maybe the trails wasn't my best. Um, oh no, there's some trails in here that I appear to be close to. Nope. Well, maybe through here. Anyway, something I could build up. If I really, really cared about that, I could build up the weight on that. And that's one of the nice things about having the models is that it's easy to change. If you have any questions about least cost path or this demo, let me know.